This is the Samsung Arc, a 55 inch 4K 1000R curved 165Hz monstrosity that I think has to be the most confusing product of any that I've reviewed so far. Now I'm upgrading from my 49 inch Samsung G9 Neo because I think that this might be my new daily driver for the foreseeable future. But the upgrade hasn't been all that smooth and it's introduced a few problems for me. So in this video, I just want to go into the pros, the cons, and also a few minor footnotes to help you get the best from this screen. Now we've all seen the reviews from the big tech channels who say how amazing this is for gaming and extreme TikToking, but I want to know for myself, not sponsored and not just focusing on the extreme stuff, and instead see what this is actually like when people use it for day-to-day -day productivity as a monitor with a Mac. And if you appreciate a more genuine, honest and down-to-earth approach to tech reviews, then consider subscribing to this channel as that is exactly what I'm trying to do here on this channel. So I will preface this this video with I'm not a PC gamer I do play Xbox and PS5 every day but I'm not gonna go heavy into what it's like to game with this monitor other than some light gaming this is mostly a video about how well the Samsung Arc works for productivity and with my Mac so firstly in terms of the pros the first thing is of course to state the obvious that it is big like it is ridiculously big besides the fact it just looks freaking cool having that much screen real estate opens up a ton of options if you just want as many apps as you can open on one screen like I do most of the time then this is great i'm getting way more on screen at one time and there's less hunting around to find which windows are hidden behind other apps now the size does take a while to get used to of course and particularly because there is just so much space and at times it can be a bit daunting on where the apps are now one tip i do have around this is to use a window management tool i've been using one called moom m-o-o-m for many years and this lets me snap windows into place and it also lets me save a keyboard shortcut where i can just tap a few buttons and everything just snaps into a, like a more organized place on my screen now the screen is also a real pleasure to work with when writing like documents like for example in scripting this video because I can use the huge amount of vertical space to essentially have the equivalent of a 34 inch vertical monitor even when this monitor is horizontal and not have to scroll up and down as much as I do when working on say a smaller display. I actually now get why people prefer having vertical monitors now it just makes working on documents an absolute breeze. The screen is also absolutely gorgeous for consuming content particularly when watching 4k YouTube videos on this thing it looks beautiful when you have that high dynamic range enabled in the Mac settings where the colors just really pop in. and also because it's just bigger you can really appreciate the detail when watching 4k content and I've had none of the issues I experienced with the G9 Neo when enabling that high dynamic contrast range which used to really just screw up the colors on that one as well so if you are someone who appreciates the additional vertical resolution or who stacks or is thinking of stacking two separate 49 inch screens on top of each other then I think this Samsung Arc would be a really really great option for you maybe you're a stock trader then I can see that being absolutely killer for what you need when day trading stocks every single day. And that 1000R curve that I'm a huge fan of, I think it's my favorite R curve of all of them, it does work really, really well. Though due to the size and how close it sits to you on a desk, it does mean that you're gonna have to like look up and down and around at the content. But if you're already using two separate screens, you know, stacked on top of each other, then this will be a much nicer experience just to be able to remove that bezel between the screens. Now with that 1000R curve, the idea is that it's the same shape as like your eyeball. So when looking left to right, the screen is the same distance from your eyeballs. However, since the screen is like so tall, that's not strictly true anymore. And I kind of hazard a guess that Samsung might be working on a screen that curves both ways from side to side and top to bottom to truly reflect that shape of the eyes even further. And it does say that the optimal viewing distance for this screen is at over 80 centimeters, which is a little bit confusing since as a monitor, most desks are 80 centimeters deep. So unless you're using this in maybe place of a TV on a TV stand, I'm not sure how you would ever be sat more than 80 centimeters away unless you really sit back in your chair. But Anyway, for the gamers amongst us, you can hook up a gaming PC or maybe a games console to this thing, and it is beautiful to play on. Like making full use of all the fast refresh rates, low input latency, and just gorgeous colors. It is a real pleasure to game on. Now this screen is actually bigger than the TV in my room, which is only 48 inches. And playing games like Fortnite and Halo and Forza Horizon are just so fun on a screen of this size and of this quality. I think it totally depends on what type of game you are, but the Samsung Arc definitely checks a load of the boxes and features when it comes to pure gaming. We've got the 1000R curve, 165 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, 2000 nit peak brightness, and free sync support. They're all here and packed into pretty much what is a fantastic gaming monitor. Hey, it is uh, Future Pete here, I guess. Uh, we actually reached out to Samsung to ask if they would be able to give us a discount on the screen for viewers of this video. 
And they actually said yes, which is crazy. So if you check the description down below, there should be a link, if we hopefully get it in time before posting this video, there should be a link for 10% off buying your own Samsung Arc screen. So if you are watching this video and thinking you're gonna spend that crazy amount of money on a brand new Samsung Arc screen, which is like two and a half grand, then definitely check out the link down below. You'll get 10% off. So yeah, huge, huge thank you to Samsung for offering us uh, that discount code for our viewers. Back to the video. In terms of inputs and outputs, the Samsung Arc uses a One Connect box, and more on that in a moment. But for now, let's just run through this. We have four included HDMI 2.1 ports, and also, that's it. Just four HDMI 2.1 ports. For something that's definitely a monitor, since it lives in their monitor section of the website, aside from USB and Ethernet and an optical, there is no USB-C and there's no display port. It just seems a little bit short-sighted. And basically what I come to expect when I bought a TV, but not a monitor. But using the right cable, and for those of you about to ask me in the comments, you can connect this into an M1 or M2 Apple device and get the full resolution. I've hooked this into the M1 MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac Studio, the M1 Mac Mini, and they all get the full resolution, but unfortunately don't get anything above 60 hertz for the refresh rate on the Mac side of things. Windows, PC, that's just fine, just not good old Tim Apple. Now, for some reason, it won't even go to 120 hertz, which I can get on my Samsung G9 and G9 Neo. Frustrating? Very. But whether that's an Apple thing or a Samsung thing, I'm not too sure. Now, one small but minor improvement, which I'm glad to see they've made from the G9, is they've made the Eclipse lighting brighter, which I think used to be called the Infinity lighting on the G9. Now, these are two strips that run along the top and the bottom of the monitor, and I can now just about see them reflect onto the wall behind that screen. They also have a feature that syncs the lighting to what you're seeing on screen, which kind of works, though I found most of the time it just gives me this teal color, even though nothing on the screen is teal. And it's certainly no match for Govi or, you know, Philips Hue light strips, which I've mounted on the back of my main TV, which really enhances the viewing experience when watching content. You've also got the included two remote controls and they make using this screen an absolute pleasure. Although this chunky controller does take up a fair bit of desk space, but it is very usable, works very, very well. And just saves me having to root, like reach around the back, the sides, or even underneath to like toggle the power as well as browse through all menus. Now, both of these are solar powered, which again is a really neat feature. And I do genuinely find myself using like both of them them, depending on whether I'm using it as a monitor or more like a TV. And this for me is where I genuinely really struggle with the Samsung Arc. Is it a TV with monitor features added or is it a monitor with TV features added? I'm not actually sure which. It's called a gaming monitor and it lives on the monitors page on the website, but the inclusion of a One Connect box makes it feel more like a TV, especially as again, you can only connect four HDMI devices into this one screen. And also the One Connect box is the most gigantic thing that I have ever seen, like far bigger than any other TV boxes that I've reviewed so far. And since this is supposed to be on your desk, rather on a TV stand, that begs the question of where the heck do you put this huge box? Like it is far too big to fit in my cable tray. Now I can understand why they've used it because it's keeping all of like the messy cables away from the screen. So you can then quick and easily rotate the screen to vertical without worrying about snagging a cable, which after a few days, I'll be honest, I just couldn't get on with it. Like firstly, the display resolution of my Mac doesn't also to adjust when changing the kind of portrait mode. So it just tries to show that insanely high 4K resolution on a tiny screen. It, it just doesn't work on the Mac side as you can't even read the text. Now, secondly, in vertical mode, you get up to three windows where you can display content. Now, typically one of those will be the Mac. And for the second and third, you'll give an option such as a YouTube app, a web browser, maybe Samsung TV or another app which you can install. You can't even hook up a second HDMI cable to the Mac and get a sort of semi dual stacked screens look because it only lets you display one HDMI my source at a time. You can't even have your computer on one input and a games console on a second input, which then begs the question, why would you use it in this mode? If this is indeed primarily a computer monitor, then you already have YouTube and a web browser all available on your computer. So the only reason I could think to use it in this format is maybe if you want to, you know, maybe watch a movie on one section whilst working or maybe gaming on another. But this introduces yet another problem because you can only select one source for audio. Now the workaround for this is to use speakers attached to your desktop PC. But if you had say your computer, a movie, and I don't know, watching a sports 
show on the third, then you would have to use the desktop controller to toggle the audio. Now, other than these issues with like multitasking, yes, with vertical mode, you can indeed scroll TikTok full screen. And yes, I did end up getting sucked into TikTok for over an hour while shooting this video. Thank you, TikTok. And you can use a Samsung wireless DeX in landscape mode, which may or may not be interesting depending on whether you actually use DeX or not. Now, there are three more things I wanna cover off here as sort of a minor footnote, because I originally had some issues and doubts when I first set this up. So to help prevent you from making the same mistake that I did, here they are. Now, the first thing that I thought I would have a problem with is the weight of this thing. Now, I have one of these like YouTuber home desk setups that we're seeing a lot. It's an IKEA Carby kitchen worktop laid on top of two Annex drawers. Now, if you are just doing that, be sensible and just buy a leg for the middle to support the weight of this thing because this screen weighs an absolute fuck ton. It is definitely a two person job to lift this out of the box and onto your desk. Now, I did recently also convert my desk to a sit stand desk and I did this by buying a desk frame from Ergo Desks here in the UK and then I screwed the worktop to the frame and there's a link down below to get £10 off in there store but I'm happy to report that the autonomy desk frame does support the weight of this ridiculously big screen and the only issue is to keep in mind the height of your ceiling as to be able to like rotate my screen I need to kind of dip the desk down to give me the space to rotate it so just keep that in mind now the second issue I had was the first time I plugged this in from my Mac studio via HDMI was the horrendous screen quality like everything was really pixelated and it just felt really sluggish even though it was at 60 hertz and since Apple hasn't caught up with a standard that was released five years ago, Apple, five years. Now, since this screen doesn't have a USB-C port, I ended up buying this cable from Amazon. And again, I'll leave a link down below for the right one, which converts USB-C on the Mac Studio into HDMI and the image quality dramatically improved for me. Now, it didn't feel sluggish anymore, but yes, there is still, unfortunately, that issue of getting anything over 60 hertz on the screen from a Mac. And I've tried like numerous cables and adapters, but so far, no dice. And thirdly, where do you put the webcam? You can't put it on top of the screen because otherwise you'll just be playing like spot the bald spots on the top of your head. And when you rotate the screen, of course, it's gonna fall off. Now, the best thing I've come up with is mounting my favorite webcam, the Insta360 Link, onto a tripod, also from Insta360. And whilst this does look really, really stupid, it's actually quite clever because if you're on a video call, you can place the video chat right behind the camera which will then look as if you are looking everyone in the eye when speaking to them, since you're kind of looking through like the camera at them. Now, I'd be tempted to say that this would actually be better off as a gaming TV, you know, like one that goes in your man cave and basically only gets used when you fire up the gaming console. But at two and a half grand, you have alternatives like even Samsung's own QN90B with like many of the same features and at a larger size of 65 inch for a grand less or even the 75 inch version for the same price when trading in another TV. So it might kind of be worth considering before diving into purchase. Actually, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that comparison and I might see if I can get my hands on one to review. But if you are watching this video and thinking that looks really awesome, but I just don't think I need something quite as big, then check out my review of the Samsung G9 Neo instead, as that is a great option.